America Newscape shares. History Matters June 16 through June 30, 2023 via the Grateful American Book Prize. A bi-weekly feature courtesy of the Grateful American Book Prize showing our children that their past is prelude to their future by John Grimaldi and David Bruce Smith. On June 18, 1983, Sally Ride boarded the Challenger and became the first American woman to traverse the cosmos. Originally, NASA had restricted its core of astronauts to men, but, according to History.com, in 1978, the agency changed its policy and approved six women out of 3,000 original applicants to emerge as the first female astronauts in the U.S. space program. Ride, with Stanford-stamped degrees in science and physics, was quickly positioned in the inaugural lineup. She became an on-the-ground capsule communicator for NASA's STS-2 and STS-3 space transportation system, missions in 1981 and 1982, and an expert in controlling the shuttle's robotic arm. NASA assigned Ride to be part of the STS-7 crew on April 30, 1982, serving as mission specialist and joining Commander Robert L. Crippen, mission specialist John M. Fabian, physician astronaut Norman E. Thaggard and pilot Frederick H. Hawk on the historic flight. For more information, the Grateful American Book Prize recommends Sally Rides and Susan Okies to space and back. After World War I, America's unemployed veterans were promised bonus act payments for their services, but political delays left them adrift in poverty. Finally, on June 22, 1944, President Franklin Roosevelt signed the GI Bill and ended the ordeal. According to History.com, as the last of its sweeping New Deal reforms, Roosevelt's administration created the GI Bill, officially the Servicemen's Readjustment Act of 1944, to avoid a relapse into the Great Depression after the war ended. FDR particularly wanted to prevent a repeat of the bonus march of 1932, and when 20,000 unemployed veterans and their families flocked in protest to Washington. The American Legion, a veterans organization, successfully fought for many of the provisions included in the bill which gave returning servicemen access to unemployment compensation, low-interest home and business loans, and, most importantly, funding for education. The Grateful American Book Prize recommends the GI Bill. The New Deal for Veterans by Glenn Altshuler and Stuart Blumen. On June 27, 1829, James Smithson, an English scientist and well-to-do member of the National Academy of Sciences, died at the age of 64 and left his entire fortune of $500,000—$16,487,120—in-2023—to the United States of America, to found at Washington, under the name of Smithsonian Institution and Establishment for the Increase and Diffusion of Knowledge. Some people say the bequest was motivated, in part, by revenge, against the rigidities of British society, which had denied Smithson, who was illegitimate, the right to use his father's name. After Congress learned of the lucky largesse, it was decided to use the funds to build museums, conduct research, produce publications, invest in the sciences, the arts, and history. Now, it is comprised of a worldwide network of 21 buildings, 9 research facilities, a zoo, and 2016's National Museum of African American History and Culture. The Grateful American Book Prize recommends Gore Vidal's novel, The Smithsonian Institution. Please visit facebook.com slash Grateful American Book Prize and please consider subscribing to this channel and visit their website gratefulamericanbookprize.com.